Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. I've got something interesting for you, and it's not necessarily this signal generator, although if you are interested in it, have a look at my earlier videos on this signal generator. It's quite a fun kit, kind of useful for what you're going to be doing today, and that's playing with a Game Boy. And you think, signal generator, Game Boy, how are they related, Andrew? They're related because of this, yes. Not the Super 251 one cartridge that I abused to get this, but the Elector oscilloscope that's in it. So if, before we play with the software, I know you guys are just too keen to see what's under the hood. So we're going to try to get in there and to do that. I do have some of these security bits and I'm hoping one will do that. Nintendo famously love to use security bits, but they're relatively easy defeated. I remember when I did this, I made my own. So what you do is get a flathead screwdriver. Have a look at this profile. Yeah, just dremel out the middle of a flatbed screwdriver. Flatbed. <laughs> flat head screwdriver and then you can get it in among those little doodad things it's almost like a reverse torx or something but you can do it put your back into it maybe i should replace this with just a regular screw but i don't foresee me undoing this i bought this kit probably gosh like 20 years ago now and you could still buy it actually i think elector are charging something like 160 euros for this pcb so it's it's amazing that it's kind of something that's still obtainable and that's elector spelled e-l-e-k-t-o-r so if you ever read the magazine i think it's a effectively a german uh, electronics magazine that took a little bit more effort than i was expecting to be honest so let's see how do we open the Game Boy shell. I have to admit, it's been years since I've done this, and I kind of feel they're a slidey thing. Because the Game Boy Advance shell had a slide. This would have been, look, way... Oh, yeah, there you go. And this would have probably been before I had any kind of real tool, so it was just mashed out with a Stanley knife. But look, that is the PCB as it arrived. Gosh, brings back memories. So let's see what we can see on here. Clearly you have the two input ports and you have the switch and that's normally, um, I don't know what's giving you, is it a one times or a ten times? It's probably shunting it through uh, some sort of resistor divider. Anyway, you can let me know how oscilloscopes work if you know. Uh, tuning pot here, tuning pot here, so definitely something to just trim those up a little bit. And then you've got your main gubbins there. So there's down here a Maxim Max 14CAG. That's some sort of chip going on there. But this chip, I believe, I was going to say, I believe it to be a ROM, really. It's probably connected up to the standard Game Boy gubbins. Um, you can see these center pins here going up to there yeah they're going to underneath that so i guess that is effectively like the rom or the main interface i mean it could emulate a rom and have its firmware elsewhere but i don't think that's what it's doing again you can get the schematics for this off elector's website this is the ds1267s-100 and i'm guessing this is the firmware of the card so it's pretty much all there you know if i zoom in guys you can have a, a good old look there you can cut and paste that into your cad package and make your own virtually there's not much to see and then on the back just some bits so let's just chuck it back in and actually just fire it up so i think it's becoming clear why we need that signal generator so we'll plug that in let's turn it on that's no good i know they say it doesn't do anything but it makes me feel better about it clearly it does work look absolutely does work <laughs> so you can get a screen that you guys can see at home so there you go it just says gb dso and you've got a bunch of options i'll show you how it works before we start trying to get a signal onto it um, you can see the start select ba buttons those are operating the main features of this software so if i go in and say for example i'll hit um i'm not really sure actually this is like dc and ac i'm guessing again i need to read the manual but i'm going to hit start and we've got one channel uh, scopage going on. That's how it's set at the moment. And you can see you've got uh, one volt uh, range set on the actual um, scale. So that means each of these cubes, and again, I'll zoom in a little bit more so you get a better idea. Sorry for the, the color here. It's, a bit, it's all a bit um, 
tricky. I could change the aperture of my camera, but I'm feeling a bit tr lazy on that. So this is one volt, one volt, one volt, one volt, one volt. You get the idea. So now that's selected, you can see the A is selected. If I push left and right on the D-pad, it's changing the value. And that's basically saying now, this is 200 millivolts, 200 millivolts, 200 millivolts. So it's becoming very sensitive. And you can wind that uh, all the way down to ground, which you don't want, but you can say, look, that's 50 millivolts. So it's pretty sensitive. But the most common you would use, um, if you can get it working again, is one volt, really. Normally one volt's a good one. And then you can see if you've got a one volt, you can, if actually, if I push up and down, by the way, I can move the scale. So I can make it line up with the bottom of the screen. So the maximum you've got in this range is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight volts though is no good if you're trying to measure something with 12 volts, for example. So what I'd normally do, then you'd have two volts. So two, four, six, eight, yeah? So that's how an oscilloscope works in general. So it's quite nice that I can actually show you this because I know some of you have been asking me how oscilloscopes work. So now I'm gonna press B on the uh, Game Boy controls and you can see that it now selects B here and then I can do the same actually and turn that on. So I've got actually a B channel that See, you know, I think that uh, initial screen when you boot up gives you a set of defaults, like some handy defaults. So B is off. And then if I press start, you can see it goes into the time per division. So what this is saying is each square in this direction on the X axis is one millisecond, yeah? And then you can have 500 microseconds or 200 microseconds. And it goes all the way down all the way down to five microseconds and I've tested this and at five microseconds it can actually pretty much read a hundred kilohertz signal you can definitely see a hundred kilohertz signal at that but we won't be operating it at that today because of my signal generator actually it does it goes up to a hundred maybe we will um, and then you've got this uh, trigger menu which is obtained by pressing the select button on the Game Boy and once you've got the select button, you can choose if it's a falling edge, ride, rising edge, single event. Um, I think there's is there something called normal. Let's see, you've got normal edges. There you go. So I think in order to get the best out of it, though, we've got to actually hook it up to something. And I do have a headphone wire here, which should work. Now you can do, there's actually some other secret, secret menus. And I'll work out how to get to those menus if you hold down the buttons on this thing. There are other menus that allow you to do a fast Fourier transform, transform and uh, XY plotting on here. So that means you can set it up so that one set of uh, probe leads is the X channel and one is the Y. So that means you can actually draw circles and shapes using it like basically a vectrex screen for argument's sake. And I don't think you're going to get away with it on this, but technically, if it was fast enough, you could play some of that music. So what I've got here, unfortunately, is some headphone, uh, stereo headphone thing. So it's going to be a little bit tricky to work out what's what. But I do know that the two green wires will be ground. So I'm going to hook those up to a probe on their own. And then we're just going to touch off onto the output for the signal generator the, one of the other two one of the other two wires until we see something on the screen and then we'll lock it all down play with it so i did shut that down now the signal generator again is something i just bought off uh, ebay as a kit we did a video on it in the previous one and actually i can see and i'm pretty sure you can't there is some gu gubbins on the screen and that'll be a waveform from the ac 60 hertz in the air Okay, so I've tried that one. Didn't do much on the white wire. I'm gonna try that on the red. So remember, this is because this is a stereo wire and the output from that will just require a mono wire. So, so you can see we've got a nice steady output. I'm comparing that to my oscilloscopes. You might hear the fans on in the background. What I've done, I've just basically turning the tuning knobs and you can see as I adjust them on the signal generator, I can adjust the output here. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at my main scope and I'm winding this down right now until I get a width of two milliseconds. And you can see we're on the two millisecond scale here and it's pretty much dead on. Each division here is two milliseconds. So that's very pleasing, isn't it? Um, so if we kind of try to do a double, let's see if we can um, get that down to one. Oh, I can't get it down to one. <laughs> 
Why not? Oh, there we go. Yes, I can. I've got a bit more adjustment. That's the maximum of my course scale. There we go. We're just kissing one. Just the fine scale now. So we've got just about one. So you can see now it's pretty much double. So you've got the each graduation here. You've got from here to here and you can see one full wave of the signal. So that's groovy. So let's though wang this up. Wang it. Wang it down to Chinatown. So look at that. Um, my scope is telling me that is oh crikey 240 ish microseconds that's a little bit unstable but let's see if we can see that oops by playing with the scales i was pushing the wrong button there i was actually changing oh look and that was that secret menu i was telling you about so there you go on the 500 microseconds you're seeing it should be showing nearly the full wave and it is showing nearly the full wave and that's because of course it's not quite exact so what you can do though at the other end of the scale, so if I turn it the other way so that our signal is really humongous. So this is a five millisecond signal. And you can see now again, you've got the trigger menu. If I click, how do I get yeah, the trigger menu? You can choose if it's on the falling edge or the rising edge. So you wanna make a decision on that one. Oops, let's go back. There we go. You can see that's pretty good. Um, it's actually 5.8. Um, if I wind it up and down a bit, let's see if we can get it precisely 5. There you go. There's your 5. It does look a lot square, I have to admit, on my actual scope. But you have to bear in mind, look at the junk I've got going on here. It's not the ideal way of measuring anything. You have no way of checking it out. So I'm going to move now the uh, output from the square wave of the signal generator IC to... It's called the sine or triangle wave. So this is now a sine wave and I'm adjusting it down so it's going to be a sine wave of precisely more or less let's call that five shall we it's close enough um, and you can see if you look closely in one graduation on this 10 um, 10 millisecond scale you've got a full wave virtually it's gone up and then down so that's pretty cool but to get more use out of this what you would do oh, <laughs> I do like to mess with this thing it's a problem with all these scopes um, I've got a lot of these pocket DSO type scopes and they're all slightly different different UIs so you can see you can adjust this then so you get a nice wave and actually that looks spot on to what I'm seeing on my bench scope so I'm very pleased with that so I'm leveling out down changing the amplitude um, I'm going to just turn off my display. I'm basically running on a certain scale on mine. So let's turn it down to one volt, shall we? So that's pretty much a VPP of one volt. And there's something odd here because I've got this thing set to a 10 volt scale. So I think there's probably something you need to adjust in the, there's a switch on the top because you've got a 10 times, remember there's a 10 times adjuster. That's why you're seeing that. Um, so ignore the kind, you've got to beware of these scale multipliers and then I'm going to turn this right up so the amplitude is hitting. It's actually kissing um, 4.2 volts but it is levelling out so there you go, there's a, obviously a problem here with uh, impedance or something eating the top of that. So that's a nice um, sine wave and we actually have on this a triangle wave so let's plug that into the old triangle wave and there you go. Again, those flattening things, I don't think they're uh, an effect necessarily of the scopage. They could be, but you can see it's hitting a limit. Those of you with uh, electronic engineering um, degrees will know what I'm talking about, or technicians or anything, anything more than me basically will be, will be up there. Now, again, this um, gadget I've got generating these signals here, um, I've actually got lots of settings. I've got one to 10 uh, kilohertz, uh, 10 to 100 hertz and then I'm in the 100 to 3 kilohertz range but you can actually put it up to the 65k 
to one meg. So I'm going to pop it in there, see if it does anything. And I'm going to go back to our sine wave. And I'm looking at my screen. Um, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing this thing. Is it doing something? Oh, hello. Let's. I'm going to hit auto set while I do that. Right, so that's what we get on the screen. We're going to see if we can get a setting on here that makes sense and we're going to make the time div really low. So we're down to 200, 100, 50 microseconds, 20 microseconds. Too much now. You see we're too much. We're going to go back up. Do you get Look at that. There you go. So that's on the 100 microseconds scale and um Basically, the scope is telling me the width of this is 121 microseconds. So what I'm going to do is try to make it a nice multiple. So it's either going to be, see if I can get it down. I can't get it down to 100, but we can put it up to 200. We're almost there. Two, that's near enough 200. So there you go. You should be able to see a full wave within a... 100 div or so two of them so um now you can stop this jittering around by the way i did discover this so if you put it on the trigger menu you can actually set this to to basically capture and stop i, I did get it to do it once it's doable so you want to play with that or read the bloody manual you can even turn off triggering um let's have a look Got all these other things here so that's regular mode you've got the fast Fourier transfer mode look at that there's your FFT F 5 kilohertz frequency per division on that one but let's go back because we're not we're not into that right now ah There we go, back to back to basics. Right, I don't know how I did it, which combination actually makes that just pause for you. Um, but yeah, if you have a look, you've got a full sine wave basically um, coming from here to how many? One, two, it's almost, would you say, one, two, four, four squares? And that we have a width of 200 microseconds on the uh, main scope. So I don't know if that's right, is it? 200 microseconds anyway who knows i think we've we've played enough with this the question though you're asking though is this useful for anything and um i'm gonna say maybe i i don't know if it's got the 100 kilohertz range it's probably good for audio-ish things or slow switching things so you could use it as a kind of a voltmeter and a field oscilloscope for kind of slow things. But if you're imagining you're going to work it on crystals and clocks, you probably won't see that. But you might see the transistor switching in a, in a suitable sort of circuit for that. So there you go. That's the Elector Game Boy oscilloscope. Again, 20 year old, still running. Pretty nice thing. You can still obtain it, still obtain the circuit diagrams and make your own if you want to. So there you go. Maybe it'd be nice from the Game Boy Color. We could try it in maybe an SP. Who knows? As ever, thanks for watching.